Okay, now for question number six from S1 Statistics 1, June 2017, international A-level paper. Um, her question here is about discrete random variables, which a lot of students seem to be afraid of, but it's nothing to be afraid of, really. Um, over here we have a question which describes a experiment. Well, kind of an experiment. A biased coin has a probability of 0.4 of showing a head. Okay, it's biased, so of course the probability of heads and tails are not the same. Probability of head it seems to be less than tail. So the probability of a head is 0 0.4. That means the probability of getting a tail is going to be 0 0.6. Okay. In an experiment, the coin is spun until a head appears. Okay, so you keep spinning. If a head doesn't appear, you keep spinning, you keep spinning. If a head has not appeared after four spins, the coin is not spun again. Okay. So if it doesn't appear after four spins, you don't spin the coin again. Okay, so the random variable x represents the number of times a coin is spun. For example, x equals 3 if the first two spins do not show a head, but the third spin, spin does show a head. So when x equals 3, that means it's spun three times. It means there was no head, then there was no head, then there was a head. Okay, the coin would not then be spun a fourth time since the coin has already shown a head. Okay, because you stop as soon as the head is shown. Show that the probability x equals 3 is 0 0.144. So they've kind of like helped us here by giving us a value and to see if we're on the right tracks, we should get the same value. So the probability that x equals 3 means you get a tail, and then you get a tail, and then you get a head, and then you stop. That's the only way of getting x equals 3, three throws. You have to throw again if you've got a tail, you've got to throw again if you've got a tail, and then you get a head, you don't throw again, that's three throws exactly. Okay, so that's going to be 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, which is 0 0.6 squared, times 0 0.4. And hopefully that will give us our answer. So you have 0 0.6 squared times 0 0.4, which gives us as a decimal 0 0.144. Yep, that's exactly right. That's 0. Point, oops, uh, 0 0.144. That's equal to 0 0.144. So that's a probability. That's showing that. Okay, so we know we're on the right tracks, hopefully, now. Then it says, P part, B part 1, write down the value of Px equals 1. Well, that's pretty simple. The probability that x equals 1 is equal to just getting ahead. That's it. Which is getting ahead is 0 0.4. So there's 0 0.4 here. Then the probability that x equals 4. Now, there's two ways to do, about, to do this. One of them is... 1 minus the probability of x equals 1 plus 2 plus 3. You could do that. Okay, that's the easiest way to get out of it. So you just take your answer of these three and so you have 0 0.144 plus 0 0.24, whoops, 0 0.24 um, plus 0 0.4, okay, which gives you 0 0.784, 1 minus 0 0.784. 1 minus 0 0.784. Let's get rid of this. Okay, which gives you, so 1 minus that gives us 0 0.216. Z whoops, What's happening there. I don't know why that's happening. 0 0.0.216. Okay, so that's the answer to part two. Now we could have got part two in another way, which is longer, and I'll just show you so that it makes uh, sense to you all. Okay, so this is 0 0.216. 216. Okay, because they all have to add up to one. That's the reason the probability distributions must always add up to one. They all have to add up to one. Okay, now. The reason uh, I want to show you another way of doing it so you understand the concept what's going on here. So the probability, you know, I wouldn't do it this other way in the real exam because of time, but I just want to show you so that you understand what's happening. Okay, so the probability of x equals 1 is pretty simple, as we saw. It's just you get ahead the first time. The probability x equals 2 is, again, very simple. You get ahead the tail the first time and then ahead. So it's going to be 0 0.4, sorry, 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, which is 0 0.24. And as we saw, the probability of x equals 3 is getting a tail and then a tail and then a head. 
okay, which is going to be 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4. Now, the probability that x equals 4 is slightly different. The probability of x equals 4, there's two different scenarios. One is that you've got basically 0 0.6. Uh, you've, you've got tail all four times, so 0 0.6 to the power of 4. That's getting a, a 0 0.6 all four times. Okay? And that is not quite the same as um, the answer here because there's another scenario. Because if I did 0 0.6 to the power of 4, you'll see I don't get the same answer as this. Okay, 0 0.6 to the power of 4 will give me a different answer. Okay, which is 0 0.1296, which is not our answer. Okay, because there's another way of getting the answer there. Okay, there's another way of getting x equals 4. Because remember, um, you keep spinning or th tossing the coin until you get the head. So it could have been that we got a tail all four times. The other possibility, so you could have got a tail and a tail and a tail and a tail, which gives you 0 0.6 to the power of 4. But then you could have got a tail, and then a tail, and then a tail, and then a head. And you would stop at the fourth row because you've got a head on the fourth row. So that's 0 0.6 cubed times 0 0.4. So you have to also get 0 0.6 cubed times 0 0.4. And these two different outcomes have to be combined together. And if I add these two, these two outcomes together, I should get 0 0.216, which is the answer that we got by just subtracting one uh, these from one but let's see let's make sure that we, we get that so i have to add to this 0 0.6 cubed okay times 0 0.4 and you see we get exactly the same answer here okay so i wouldn't actually do it this way but i just want to make it clear to you what's going on in this particular experiment okay so there's two ways of us having four throws one is you got four all four tails and the experiment stops because it says here um, the coin will not be spun a fourth time. No, sorry. The, the, it says here that the um, after if a head has not appeared after four spins, the coin is not spun again. So there's only going to be four tries. So you could get four tails. That's one way of getting four throws. The other way is getting you got three three tails and then the last the fourth throw was a head. That's another way of getting four throws. There's two different ways which combine together, and that gives us the same answer there. Okay, now. Right, I'll spend a bit longer on that because I just wanted to explain it. As I said, I would do it this way normally because that's, you know, you've got all of these, just one minus, all of those will give you that and you can continue. All right, this is just to give you some deep understanding of the problem. Now, then it says find EX. What does EX mean? It means expected value of X and it's basically the mean of all of these scores. And because they're all out of one, basically, all you have to do to find the probability or to find EX is you have to just multiply these together and these together and these together and these together and add them all together. And dividing by one, which is the total, it will give you the same answer. So you just multiply one times 0 0.4 plus two times 0 0.24 plus three times 0 0.144 plus four times 0 0.216. When you have a frequency table, you multiply Okay, to find the, the, the product of these, and you divide by the number of items, which will be the sum of these. Okay, so because uh, they add up to one, you don't have to divide by one, it's going to give you the same thing. All right, so now that gives you your answer for the expected value. Okay, so we take the calculator and we do one times 0 0.4 plus two times 0 0.24 be careful, 0 0.24 plus 3 times uh, 0 0.144, be very careful with your entries here, plus 4 times 0 0.216, 0 0.216, that gives you the expected value which is 2.176, 2.176. 2.176 okay you can leave your answer like that if you want because it's an exact value if you want to write it to uh, 3sf you can as well but i would leave it like that that's fine okay now then it says does it say um it doesn't say how to write it. that's fine okay then it says find the variance of x now the variance is 
the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, and the mean is what we just found here. This is the mean. Okay, so this is EX basically. Okay, the mean of the squares is basically when you take find when you find EX all squared. Okay, so basically you've got to get um, sorry, that's different. The square of the mean is EX all squared. That's EX all squared. That's the square of this value here. But the mean, let me write it down here. Okay, but the mean of the squares is like EX squared. And how do you do that? Well, you find what X squared is first. So you can, I can write here X squared, which is 1 and 4 and 9 and 16. So you multiply 1 by 0 0.4 and 4 by 0 0.24 and 9 by 0 0.144 and so on. So it's like almost the same as this. So EX squared, it's almost the same thing as this, but you do 1 squared times 0 0.4, which is actually the same thing, plus 2 squared, which is 4, times 0 0.24, plus 3 squared, which is 9, times 0 0.144, plus 4 squared times 0 0.216. So we take all of these values. I can just go back and just add a square to each of those. That's 4 squared and a 3 squared and a 2 whoops, squared and the 1 squared is going to be 1 anyway. So that gives us 6.112. So that's 6.112. So that's 6.112. And so therefore, our variance is going to be the, this is the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean, which is 2.176 squared. So I find what that is, minus 2.176 squared and that gives us 1.377024 1.377 I'll write it as 1.377 1.377 to 3SF that's going to be 1.38 and there's your answer okay to part C Okay, now part D and E, I'll do it on the next video, just to split this up and make it going to be too long otherwise.